welcome to the Gospel Truth. I'm Brother Alan Jackson, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with another outpouring of his tender love and mercy, and that he's allowed me once again to be on this the time side of life and have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I'd like to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for their diligent service to the gospel truth. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they're standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as observers of this program, and I'm praying that God will continue to bless you and your family members with all of those things that he knows that you're standing in need of as well. And then, of course, I am encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer, and it's only God who can provide me with those things that I'm standing in need of. And so this evening, before we get to our message, I have a couple of announcements, and I also have a song for you. The first announcement is a Save the Date, and that comes to us from the uh, Diane Avenue Church of Christ uh, at uh, 283 Diane Avenue, and that's in the city of Pittsburgh, California. And this is the uh, Sisters 24th Annual Ladies Lectureship. And again, they want you to save the date of June the 16th, 2018. So jot that down so that you can go over and be a part of that uh, great fellowship. The program begins with a continental breakfast that starts at 845, and that will run through 945. The program begins promptly at 10 o'clock. And lunch will be provided after the program. So remember, if you have any questions, you can contact Lorene Miles at 925-439-0123. Once again, for Lorene Miles, 925-439-0123. All right, save that date. And then there's another save the date coming to us from the 2018 Northern California Women's Conference, and the dates are August the 17th and August the 18th. The program begins on Friday evening at uh, 5 p.m., and that will run through 8 p.m., and then they will reconvene on Saturday the 18th at 9 a.m., and that program will run through 1 o'clock. And their theme is, the greatest of these is love. And uh, this is hosted by the uh, Church of Christ, the Hilltop Church of Christ. It's located at 3301 Morningside Drive in El Sobrante, California. So keep that in mind. These are the dates that you want to remember. That's August the 17th and August the 18th. All right, now before we get to the message, I do have a song. And you're going to be listening tonight to Revelation. And this one is entitled, Walk Around Heaven All Day. So without any further remarks, Revelation, Walk Around Heaven All Day.
Let me tell you what I'm gonna do when I go to glory. When I see Jesus, I just know. to express our appreciation and our gratitude to Revelation for that fine version of walking around heaven.
all day. This evening, I'd like to invite your attention to the book of Proverbs, the 15th chapter, and the verses number 3. Proverbs, the 15th chapter, and the verses number 3. And the Bible reads thusly, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. So it is from this verse tonight that I want to call the lesson, There is no privacy from God. There is no privacy from God. Now today, there is much talk about privacy and the breach of privacy. Uh, when we talk about privacy, we're talking about the state of being private, uh, the freedom from intrusion. Well, I'm sure that we can see today that even the Facebook giant has come under scrutiny uh, for a breach of privacy. And many people, of course, have been affected by their breach. But I came by tonight to inform you that there is nothing that you do that is private from God. All right? So, as I indicated at the scriptural reading, the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the good and the evil. So you need to understand, I don't care what it is that you think you're doing or whatever it is you think you are hiding. Maybe you can hide it from me. I'm just a man. I can't do anything about it anyway. But remember, there's nothing hid from God. God is everywhere at the same time, and he's seeing what? Both good and evil. And he's keeping a record. So to understand that, Solomon reminds us with regards to secret sins. He lets us know that our secret sins shall be uncovered. And if you will, you can go over to the book of Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, and the verse is number 14. And here Solomon says, For God shall bring into judgment every work, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You can do whatever you want to do. That's what you can do. You have that liberty in God to do whatever it is that you want to do. But remember, ultimately, you're going to face it again in the judgment. Oh, you might be pretty smooth, or as they would say, slick, and you're getting away with it. No doubt you look good, probably put on a nice suit or a nice dress, and you have a very pious demeanor. Okay? But God knows. See, because he can look beyond what's on the outside and see what's on the inside. All right? Now, perhaps there are some things in your life that you have chosen to forget about. Well, they're still there, and God knows exactly what they are. But keep this in mind, that our record is being kept in heaven. And the Bible says that when we go before God in the judgment, that a book is going to be opened and another book is going to be opened, out of which we're going to be judged according to the things that we have done in this life. Now, you may remember those cruel and evil things that you have done that nobody knows about but God. Now, see, that's what you have to keep in mind. But God. I don't know about it. And you, you look good as far as I'm concerned. I don't see anything, but I'm not looking for something. But there are folk who are looking for things so they can have some reason to accuse you. Now, remember, if you fail to forgive your brothers and sisters of their errors, but now you want God to forgive you. Now, that's contradictory, but listen to Jesus, because he makes it clear to us over here uh, in his Sermon on the Mount, and this is in the book of Matthew, if you will, and that's going to be the sixth chapter and the verses number 15, and you can hear Jesus say these words. He says, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses, all right? So this is a... A, a process of reciprocity. If you fail to forgive, then God's going to fail to forgive you. But if you forgive, then God will forgive you. 
And how many of you are holding grudges today? Something that you should have forgotten and passed on, but you're still holding it. Somebody said 25 years later, here you are still holding that. And so what happens is the manifestation of your will is being exemplified. Po folk get to see exactly who you are as a result of the life that you are living. Now, Mark says it just a little bit different. Let's go over here. But in essence, it says the same thing. So we're going to go to the book of Mark, if you will, and that's going to be the fourth chapter and the verses number 22. And if you listen carefully, you can hear him as he speaks these words. He says, for there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, all right? Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. In other words, yeah, it might be secret right now, all right? But it's going to come to light. And if you think that uh, uh, it's going to stay hid, I, I got news for you. Just stay with me now. Matthew also tells us, he says, Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. Now, whatever it is, whatever it is, it will not be hid. Now, if I can get a witness tonight, I can call on the president. Uh-huh. Donald John Trump. I tell you, he had a secret, but it has been made manifest. So I'm trying to get you to understand it doesn't matter if you're rich or even if you're poor. Secret things are going to come to light because that's the way the scripture tells us that it will happen. And then if you remember Moses, uh -huh, as he was delivering the children out of Egyptian bondage, remember Moses said over in the book of Numbers, the 32nd chapter in the verses number 33, he said, and be sure your sin will find you out. Now, you, you might be looking good to some by people today. You might be sitting on the front pew looking good. Nobody could see anything, but God knows because he knows the heart of all of us. So there's nothing that we can do that we can escape the preview from God because he sees everything, he hears everything, he knows everything. What do we say? He's omnipotent, omniscient and oscience all-wise, all-knowing, all-powerful in every place at the same time. And I'm glad I serve a God like that because I, if I had a God that couldn't see everything, then I would have a problem because you could accuse me of something and get away with it. But God knows you can make an accusation against me or a brother, but that lie, if it's a lie, will come to naught. And that's one of the things that we need to keep in mind. Sometimes people do things they do things and they have an ulterior motive in mind. And if you're not careful, they'll get you caught up because they've deceived you into thinking that they were something that they were not. But you see, God knows. Now, the book is Galatians, if you will, the fifth chapter. And one of the things that we can see with regards to uh, in, in Galatians, the fifth chapter, and that is how that the works of the flesh that are manifest, and these are the things that you need to understand and guard your heart against. The book is Galatians, the fifth chapter, and beginning with verse number 19, the Bible says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Now this is what you can see, all right? Adultery. What are you talking about? You are engaged or involved in an affair uh -huh, with somebody else's husband, or somebody else's wife, okay? Fornication, you're involved in that sexual activity and you're not authorized because you're not married, all right? And then uncleanness, you do things that are nasty and dirty and perhaps you don't even get up and clean your own body. Lasciviousness, uh-huh, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, uh, murderers, uh, heresies, envies, drunkenness, revelin revelings, 
and such the like, which I tell you now, as I've told you in the times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All right? Tonight, I've come by to give you the message tonight. There is no privacy from God. All right, when you wake up in the morning, God sees you. When you go to bed at night, God sees you. When you go to work, God sees you. When you go to school, God sees you. When you're out playing, God sees you. He sees everything. He knows everything. So you might think that you're here or you have something in the closet. God knows. He can see it. He sees it every day. So it might be here to me, but remember, I don't have a heaven and I don't have a hell. So you don't have to try to please me or convince me that you're a good person. You need to convince God that you're living right, that you're doing exactly what he has prepared and planned for you to do. Live right, love your neighbor as yourself, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And then there's a whole gamut of things over in Matthew, the 25th chapter, that you need to be doing so that you can make sure that when you come up before the Lord, you'll be able to hear him say in the final consummation of time, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now come on up here, and I'll make you ruler over many. And one of the things we need to keep in mind is that God has a, 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 a what do you call a method of classification. So I want to look at God's divine classifications at the moment. And if you look at Matthew, uh, the seventh chapter, verses 13 and 14, what you find is that there are two classes, the saved and the damned. Now, which category or which classification are you going to be in depends on how you are living your life. Matthew 7, 13 and verse number 14, this is what Jesus says. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. All right? And then he says, because straight is the gate and broad is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Now, these are the classifications. Now, in the book of Mark, the 16th chapter, verses 16, we hear these words written, and this is where you find out either one or two categories, all right? The Bible says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So you're either going to be saved or you're going to be damned. Well, that damnation is condemnation to hell, all right? And the Bible tells us that the fire is never quenched and the worm shall never die. Now, you are either in the broad way or you're in the narrow way. That's what the, the scriptures read. Matthew 7, 13, 14. We are told about the broad and the wide way. Which way is that? That's the way that leads to destruction. And then the narrow way is the straight gate and narrow way which leads to life and only a few people are going to find it, all right? Now, the Lord classifies you as either being wise or foolish. Over in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, or rather the 7th chapter, verses 24 through 27, you know, Jesus gives the parable and he talks about, he that heareth these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And then he says, he that heareth these things of mine and doeth them not, I will liken him unto a foolish man. And foolish, the root word of foolish is fool. So Jesus classifies you either being a wise individual or a fool. You take your choice. Then you just have to do those things that are right in God's sight. Now you're either involved in the work of the spirit or in the work of the flesh. And that's over in Galatians, the fifth chapter. And I think we uh, went over there already, but we'll just go back again just so that you will uh, understand and know that this is just one of the other categories that the Lord has, all right? And again, in Galatians, the fifth chapter, we find these words for uh, the work of the flesh, uh-huh, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, and we talked about them, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, un lasciviousness, adultery, richcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, revelings, and such like. And he said, I told you about this before, I'm telling you again, that those people that do these things, they are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. And then... 
In Matthew, the 25th chapter, Jesus describes his classification as being either sheep or goat. Now he says that the sheep are going to be gathered on the right hand and the goats are going to be on the left hand. And he's going to separate the goat from the sheep. Now, how are you living your life today will depend on what you end up in the divine classification of the Lord. And that is either you are a sheep or you are a goat. Now, keep this in mind. Jesus, we find in the scriptures, Paul says in Romans the 6th chapter, verses 17 and 18. Uh huh. Let's go over and get that so you'll know exactly what I'm saying and we'll stay on point with the word. And this is Romans, the sixth chapter, verses 17 and 18. And this is what he says. He says, but God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. You have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. So you're either a servant of sin or a servant of righteousness. Keep this in mind. You are definitely not both. By faith, repentance, confession, and baptism, the Lord will add you to his body, which is his church. And then if you live a faithful life, he will save you in the end. The Savior's invitation is to you, to everyone. And Jesus is calling earnestly. He says over in the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 28 through 30, here are his words. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In other words, Jesus is saying, I'm not going to put any more on you than you can bear. And if you just listen by faith, you can hear him knocking at the door of your heart. He says, open up and let me come in. He says, if you let me come in, I'll come in and sup with you and you with me. I'm Brother Jackson, and I'm inviting you to join us again next week, of course, if it's God's will. And then also, let me remind you to like us on YouTube. You can go to YouTube and bring up Eddie Cam 1 and the Gospel Truth, or you can bring up the Gospel Truth with Alan Jackson. Until next week, it is my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe.